Hey Canucks fans, it is Sunday. That means it's time for another edition of Ask Me Anything. I'm Clay Emo. I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clay Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCBC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. And this is my Canucks take on the one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Sunday, October the 18th. This is where you get Canucks insight that's positive and timely. Two quick programming notes. Look forward to my next Zoom chat. It's actually with my brother, Jason. He has a lot to say, and I think you guys are going to find him very likable, very knowledgeable. So look for that tomorrow morning. And then my live streams, as you guys know, I've moved it from Sunday nights to Monday nights because I now bowl on Sunday nights. So look, join me for my live stream on YouTube tomorrow night, Monday night at 10 o'clock. I have a lot of questions today, which is really good, really happy. I didn't even actually have to ask for questions on Twitter because they all came from YouTube. So let's get right into it. Twisted Ross says, do you think it's plausible to keep both Vertanen and Levo? I'm a big fan of both, but I feel that Vertanen might fit better on a third line role for now. I was really impressed with Levo before his injury. A great question, Twisted Ross. I actually talked about this at length over the past two days on my vlog. Um, I don't think it's plausible. I don't think they need to keep both Vertanen and Levo, especially when you think you have Pod Colson and Hoglander coming up in the next one or two years. So you don't want to tie up too much money, too much term too many spots in guys like Vertanen and Levo, but I definitely think you need at least one of them for sure. You need one of them. And it sounds like it might be Vertanen given that they're going to arbitration, but you never know. Uh, Josh Levo is out there as well. And you're, you're exactly right. It's too bad. Um, as I talked about yesterday, he he's really has no bargaining power. He really has no leverage after suffering that unfortunate knee injury against Vegas back in December, but he was playing top six minutes. We've seen Jake Vertanen get a chance with top six minutes. I, I've questioned before whether or not he can keep up for a, for an extended period of time with Pedersen and Miller. So it'll be fascinating to see. But to answer your question, um, it's it's possible, but I don't think it's reasonable that they are going to uh, sign both of them. I think it's going to be one or the other, given where they are in the salary cap. They still got to make moves to make both either one of Vertanen or Levo and then Gaudet fit. So I, that's why I don't think you're going to have both of them back next season. Rome Ticklin. Rome says this, if the pandemic continues, how will NHL owners be able to afford paying contracts when a major source of revenue has been ticket sales? Uh, great question, Rome. That's why I think the NHL won't go next season until they can at least have some sort of plan where, where they're playing in front of fans. Whether Even if it's limited, even if they, they push the season a bit later, I don't know how they're going to do it. We've seen different experiments in different sporting leagues. But yeah, they simply cannot go another season or, or a long period of time without getting that major, yeah, the major um, source of revenue. And that is in ticket sales. You're not going to sell a lot of merch. You're not going to sell a lot of concession if there's no one in the arena. So it'd be very tricky. But um, to answer, I don't think they can afford it. That's why I don't think any NHL owners will be able to afford it. They'll be they'll approve of any plan that has the, the season starting without fans. So that's why we haven't heard much about the January 1 start of that because the world hasn't settled down yet. So it'll be a very uh, interesting story to keep an eye on for sure going forward. Uh, I hesitate to say the screen name, but it's Jeebus Christ, G-E-B-U-S, says, do you think Anthony Duclair could be a good fit in the top six as a free agent signing? Oh, I think he'd be an excellent player for the Vancouver Canucks. He had 40 points in 60 six games last season with Ottawa. That's really good. That's a point, uh, two points every three games. Um, he only made $1.65 million a year next year, but uh, last year, but the Ottawa Senators did not qualify him, just like the Vancouver Canucks did not uh, qualify Troy Stetcher. So now he's a UFA. Maybe they were afraid of the, the arbitration, maybe hearing or the award that he might be, uh, you know, he might've been awarded, but it's interesting to declare He's, he's kind of in the he's more like Stetcher where he got outright released as opposed to Vertanen where the Canucks did do a qualifying offer. So to answer your question, yeah, I think he'd be great, and and I think um, I, I've seen I, I've seen uh, I saw a response to that question saying he would be great on the wing with Horvat. I agree with that, but how much is he going to make if he made one point six five million dollars last year and he uh, he had forty points, which is pretty good. Uh, Vertanen had forty points, so are you looking like a two and a half three million dollar contract for Duclair. So that doesn't really fit with the Canucks plans right now. Of course, they can always move out money and he would then give you a bona fide top six guy, I think even better than Vertanen and or Levo. So uh, we'll see. He's 25 years old only, third round pick, 80th overall by the Rangers in 2013. I'd like them, I'd like to see the Canucks explore, um, explore Duclair for sure. Kevin Tulak says, 
As such a good-looking guy, how does your ego handle having such a gorgeous wife that people might not notice your looks? Uh, great question, Kevin. Um, uh, yes, my wife, Gail, is gorgeous. I like to say that I married up. But there's enough good emo good-lookingness to go around. And if people aren't looking at me, but it's because they're looking at them, I can handle it. But thank you for the, for the ego boost for sure. Which player that is currently on the roster do you think will not be on the roster opening night? Wow. Um, well, I don't know if Louis Erickson counts. I think he's, he's going to start in the AHL. And maybe they do something with Jordy Ben if they figure out something to do with the bottom six. So maybe it's either Louis Erickson or Jordy Ben. How many hockey trades do you think the Canucks will make before opening night? I think they got one or two trades in them. Aside from an outright UFA signing, you know, depending on what happens with Vertanen's arbitration, with buyouts, maybe uh, Sutter's a candidate for that after the arbitration award. I see the Canucks making one, if not two trades before opening night. I don't know who they're going to trade for. I don't know what they're going to trade. Maybe they sign Jake and then trade him. Who knows? But um, yeah, I, I, don't, do, I certainly don't think they're done, either from a uh, signing standpoint or a trading standpoint. Rob says this, if Clay, if the 2021 season is canceled, does it still count as a year in players' contracts? So if the player just signed a one-year contract, would it be a free agent again on July 1st or in a free agency date? No, um, those contracts, I'm sure, only um, only count if you actually play because it it wouldn't be right if you signed a guy to a one-year contract for $5 million. Um, you either pay him the $5 million and then the contract is is fulfilled or you don't pay him the $5 million because you're not playing, but then the contract isn't fulfilled. So um, my, my guess is if the season is canceled, no, every contract just gets elongated or extended by another year or whatever, however long the delay is for sure. Uh, Patrick, if the Canucks make the playoffs next year, will they survive playing against the Blues or the Knights? Well, I like the way the Canucks played against the Blues. Obviously, they beat them. And I don't think the Blues have made any major, major... Well, they got Tori Krugin uh, to basically replace Petrangelo. So, and they lost Stastny. So I don't know if they're a better team right now. They lost Jake Allen as well. Um, I can't remember who they may have signed on free agents in free agency. So I like... Um, I, I think the Canucks would, be, would do well against the Blues. I guess the Golden Knights, um, we have Nate Schmidt and now, but they have Petrangelo. And uh, Vegas is always a good team, and they show that they're they're a better team than Vancouver. I think I think we really got lucky riding Demko for a little bit. So will they survive? The Canucks will certainly survive, but I, I certainly like the chances over the Blues as opposed to the Knights for sure. Maestro, do you think Utica Comets will move to Canada? No, I don't think so. I think they flirted with the idea, kind of getting them closer to Vancouver, at least on the West Coast or maybe in Canada, but um, I, I know Utica does very well out there despite what's going to happen next season. And I know that town has adop adopted their team as their their own. So um, although logistically it might make sense to explore it, I don't think that a move to Canada is in the cards anytime soon. That's just my gut feeling. Betty says, we should trade Roussel and sign a player for our top six. Uh, so if those are two separate things, yeah, I think we should try and sign the player for our top six. And trading Roussel, yeah, what are you going to get for him, though? Because he's got a pretty hefty contract. So I'm not sure how easy that is. I think he Roussel can still play a role in this team, but he did not. His first season was pretty good. His second season, not so much. So we've got two more years of him. And then lastly, Samir Raza says this. How are you so good looking? Well, thank you, Samir. Um, I'm sure you are as well. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So that's why I think I'm good looking. Uh, but thank you for that. And secondly, what do you think of a one-for-one -one swap of Besser for Liney, Patrick Liney? When I first thought about it, I said, there's no way. I think um, I like Besser. I think Liney is going to be too expensive and he's too streaky, blah, blah, blah. But then I started to look at the stats. And Liney, in his last three seasons, his points have been 70, 50, 63. And then he's got $6.75 million remaining on a one-year contract and then it comes to RFA. Besser's points are 55, 56, and 45. And he's got 5.875, 5.9 million for the next two seasons. And he'll still be an RFA. So when you look at the points, Liney has had 183 points over the past three seasons. Besser has had 151 points. So Liney has had 30 more points. He's probably played about 30 more games given Besser's uh, you know, injury struggle. So when I look at the, the dollar amount, a million off, only a million dollars difference, is not that big, all things considered. Now, I know the Canucks are cap strapped as we talked about. But still, I, I think, um, I thought Lining's contract was a lot heavier than that. Of course, the qualifying offer, if you do that, um, is going to be bigger because he, he's making more at the end of his, his, his contract. But yeah, um, you know, if he was one for one straight up, I'd take that. As much as I like Brock Besser, I think Patrick Liney has more 
uh, more ceiling as an as an upper echelon goal scorer. Um, so I would I would I would like Patrick Liney. I would take that deal if it was one for one and and you know I mean soak up suck up the extra money, pay it out and see what happens. But you know I think we're talking about a fantasy world right now. I don't think they're I don't think Winnipeg would do it because I think there's more value in Line A than in Besser. Line A second overall pick, Besser. 23rd overall, whatever it may be. So, uh, interesting thought though. So, thanks everyone. Thanks, Trisha Ross, Rome, Jeebus Christ, Kevin Tulak, Patrick Starr, Rob, Maestro, Betty, and Samir for all your questions. I appreciate you taking the time to type them up. I hope I answered them to your satisfaction. And uh, leave a comment below on any of my, of my answers to any of your questions. Again, look forward to my chat with my brother Jason tomorrow morning. And then, of course, uh, my live stream tomorrow night at 10 p.m. I hope you join me then. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And of course, subscribe if you like to and like this video if you like to. Enjoy the rest of the day. God bless and go Canucks go.